latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, solar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220 or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Yo, not transfer us. Yeah, transfer us. Ha, code ni ju. Okay. Sorry. I got it. Bijan bro. Alba. Mbaka. Bara Allah sabi so tariya. Ha, bara ki jana nun kunu bara tariya. Ha, jano miyona forest de biro. Gambia tongko na nun bara ya biro. Ha, birim ko na fokato. Bara isi kodo kino kato ni fobolong dlabe. 56 branches mola sota Gambia ja. Ha? Ha. Gambia kono ani Gambia bantala bangol. Nko kono ki ya biro. Kodo si fa si fa fok palindiro fonyadi lafta meme na kodi topoto ni kodi mara o jamu number one di nyonda andum fana nata anoda enterprise sotali. Welcome back, Mr. Jasse. Thank you. Mr. Jasse, Nimla Dalal Wad. I hope that uh, you have had lunch and have rested. Yakarnane, Amga, Ayububa, Te Nopale Kumatuti. And that you are now ready and able to proceed. Fumekani Parenga, Purunumuna Kuntini. Yes, I am. Thank you. Before the break, we were talking about the events that surrounded the statements that you gave at the NIA. Balanyo dor no pale kubi mungoni watani aikadu inge juhai won banga deme wancha NIA. And the um, video recorded um, confession you made. Ag video inga hamu jeli na njako kudimadoni wach kadu inga wahamsi gai fufu. Confessionary video, I meant to say, uh, which in all of would mean Nangu binga Nangu linda tumal te nga def kochi anam bo hamne danko danko record chi video pur munko gene chi television. Um, can you tell us how that confessionary uh, statement was made? Uh, on on uh, on GRTS. remember that afternoon um, we were called out ourselves. And uh, we were in told where we going. This, I wasn't told. And once we boarded the vehicle, we realized we were heading towards the NIA headquarters. Upon arrival, 
I realized that the GRTS was present when we were taken up to the conference room. And uh, I remember Momodu Haidara telling me that um, we were supposed to make a confession on television. And I objected. What was your objection? That I wasn't prepared to make a st Sorry. That I wasn't ready to make a statement on national television. And he told me I didn't have a choice over this matter. I remember he leaned over. Haidara, are you referring to? Momodu Haidara, Momodu Haidara, whom I believe at the time was the deputy director general of the NIA. He leaned over, fixed my collar, the collar of my shirt, and then whispered to me, Mr. Yase, and then he pushed back. Where and was this? Where did this? Okay, before that, what did you understand him to mean? Actually, I mean, my understanding of it was that the same rules that apply in the statement writing, if you don't do it, they beat you up. If I don't make this statement on national television, the same thing will happen to me. And I remember him saying that he was ashamed of me. How did, did you see that as a threat oh, and, oh, and open invitation? Yes. I saw it as a threat. And how did you react? I asked him what he wanted me to say. Mm -hmm. He said, just like it's in the statement, he spoke in one And he said that the president was interested in our admission on television so he could just pardon everybody. Otherwise, we will be, we'll be dealt with. And uh, what did you do? I cooperated with him. I gave him a statement. As far as you know, we are the only person who was threatened to give that statement? Um, I wasn't present where anybody else was threatened for that particular purpose, but during the course of being in Malatu through our discussions, I came to understand that um, so other people were faced the same threat to make that statement, and none of, no, one was ever, no one ever gave that statement willingly. And Yes, after I was released from mile two. Wow, then I would make a mile two. Wow. Was it what you said? Did it reflect everything that you said? Not everything that I said. Part of it was edited. Was it edited satisfactorily to convey what you intended to say or not? 
Lichides li wane eh lolu mo wane comme yo ninga bugo ninga bugo no wax nonu la deme ndax no there are instances in which i actually said that i was giving the statement under duress amna jamono jo xamne na waxon na fane ma ngone joxe cadeau gi ci ni ma ko wara joxe i wanted that statement to be part of the record lolu mom bugo na cadeau gi bokka ci li nga xamne mom lañ doon wone in the end did that find itself in the broadcast speech in the broadcast uh, tape ci mujje bi bañ genné sa cadeau yoyu wax yi nga xamne yow bugon nga pour ñu bokka ci li nga wax ndax yoyu feñon nañ no when i had a chance to review the the the, the video those were edited edit bima xamé bima amé jot nak pour tok setan video bi bayi na xel né dal cadeau yi ma bugon ñu genné yoyu lañ ko ci dok genné ko fa would you say that that tape that was aired represented your statement or would you say that it did not in view of the parts that were edited kad yow ngi ni nun ndax bi nga wax ni mom moy kad yi nga wax comme ni ngi ko bugge wala ay ay wax la yo xamne ñom ni ngi ko bugge ñom lolu lañ ko defare pour genné ko Um, I remember when I was making the statement that I was trying my best to remember the particular issues that Hyderabad wanted me to raise in the, whatever I was going to say with particularly ma ngay fatale ko bima joxe cadeau ci television bi ma ngeen jeem pour fatale ko lepp lo xamne Haydara lolu la bugga ma wax ci television bi ma mën ko fatale ko waxe ko non and that was to admit that uh, i was part of a coup attempt e lolu moy na nangu ne bokkon na ci ñi nga xamne ñoo doon fass ene daanel ngour gi and nur cham was the ring leader of that attempt ya na ci waxi tamen ne nur cham mo jita won pexé bobu non and he specifically wanted me to apologize to the government people and to the president e bugon na xamna ni bugon na man ma dal di djegalu ci wa ganda yeb rawatina sax president ba he impressed upon me that the president wanted to hear that mon jona ma degeral ne president bi dal lolu mom bu gana ko dega so i said that ma dal di ko wax after having made that confession ganaw bi nga waxe wax yoyu nga xamne ñom lolu lañu gëp pour nga nangu you are returned back to mile 2 that day bis bob lañu la deno waat mile 2 and 2 am they came again ñaari waxtu ci guddi ñu ñu waat that is correct lolu dega la prior to the video the, the television confession i was actually taken mile to and driven to my residence bala ñu bala ñu yob pour ñu wax cadeau ci television bi ma nga fatu ne jele nañ ma mal to yob mu suma keer ci ben bes bu um asp lamine cc came with me and uh, two other uh, two other officers asp lamine cc ñu na ak man ak yeneen ñaari officer I was surprised when the, we drove to my residence. Man sa dok no beton do ba nga xamé né dem nañ dem djublu ci suma kër. And they demanded the key to my car. Ñu dal di laccé suma chaari moto bi. Uh which my wife gave to them. Suma jabar jox len ko. And my com- my desktop. Ak li nga xamné moy suma computer bi dekon su ko table bi. A laptop. Laptop bi. And two video cameras. Ak ñaari video camera. And uh That was the last time I saw any of these items. Te jala ko gedje gis nak yoy ñu jël nonu bes bobu la ko gedje gis. I was returned to my to on their own vehicle. Ñu delo wat ma mile to ci sen bir moto bu ñom sen moto ci lañu dugal. La min si se drove off with my vehicle. La min si se dal di dawal mom dugal ci suma moto bi de ma mom. What if any do you know happened to your vehicle? Nga eh si fekke na xam nga ko eh la na mujje dal sa moto bi. I have written a request to this present government making the claim um over one and a half years ago I yet have not received any acknowledgement Lu tollu ci diiri ak ak gena wala ci ganaw day bindon na ngour gi nga xamne ño tok ci jamono ji eh pour sakku nak lu aju ci suma bodas yoyu way nak bete dal jeliwu ma ci dara you said you have not yet received an acknowledgement meant of my letter of my claim no response was ever made letter bobu ma len binda tom togu ma ci be legi abudin 
made the same complaint. Abu Dintamit, Lila Dal Lulu Mokodal Momit, Momit Lula Fiwa. He made the same complaint to government. Momit, Bindana, Yonik Letter and Bichingurgi, Pruhalen, Likodal. Well, they were able to show him his uh, uh, Mitsubishi vehicle, mini, but his minivan. The number one called Mitsubishi Motomi, Loham, the minivan loan. And arrangements are being made to pay for his lectures. The Fufneka Gayange Topoto Purumu Fei, Benin Mutumbi, Linga and the Moi, Moto Lexos. In your case, there's not been an acknowledgement of your letter. The Yotisa of Fana, Bente, one of the Sah, the Jordan's letter. That is correct. No, no more. Did you write to the right office in government? I sent my letter to the Ministry of Justice. As well as the Office of the President and uh, uh, Office President Bichibopan. It went through the Office of the Director General of um, Something in implementation, policy implementation, I can't remember the exact name. PIU. Yeah. Policy implementation unit. Yes, the permanent secretary there. The, or the director general, rather, I think that's the title. Yeah, my time is taking a director general be chief PIU. Yeah, I'll leave it at that and then I move on. I wish you luck in your push, in your efforts to. Uh, regain some of your properties that were taken. Dina M. Fufu, Chimbir Mum, Manglanyan, Aliana, Layala, Dimuli, Sasola, Lingabua, and Yala, Yumbalan Lako. But it is important that uh, like things are treated alike. Why not Lilu Amsolola, Miryudemi Lun, Mutopotoko Namore? On that evening, Tingo Sosu. Or that night, they came back for you at around 2 a.m. You did see what? Put jail slow up. Nyari wa put chigudi. Yes, they did. Wow. And I went through the same process of having to run through two rows of soldiers that would hit and kick you as you go through. Kwa mna madale wondek majara chidigante nyari rangi soldari o hamne dene njawi hamne njakupeni. And when we got to the NIA. Were you coughed in any way? Were you restrained in any way? Ndah, yon bobo, deng takon salohoi, wala, deng chena wan salohoi, wala, amna linga defon, feka dum na defdara. Yes, I was restrained. Wow, deng na chena wan. Okay, what happened when you arrived at the NIA? Wow, leg lana hew bingen age NIA. At the main entrance, I mean, that's the entrance of the building, I noticed there was a handful of soldiers, the same guys in black. And immediately one of them moved over and placed a, plast, a black plastic bag over my head. Were you familiar with these plastic bags? These types of plastic bags. Nda hamunga mbusu yuliyo yu hamunga le mbunge kabla aluli. Yes, they were the usual ones you find in the shops. That has the calendar on it. Moi kumbusi nga hamnere mbusu yulinge gisibiti kila tamu am calendar chikanam. Black plastic bag with a calendar written in white ink. Moi mbusu nylon bunyul ba hamne. Yung fadhi of kalenda moi weary, ba hamne bunda buwechla wal. That is correct. Wow, nola. And do you recall who put the plastic bag over your head? Ndani mafuta leku kana la solal musi na lumbu buti sababu. I later learned his name was Michael Korea. Gana gula hamne mungu chuda Michael Korea. Were you able to see him? Ndani mulo na kugis. Yes, I saw him face to face. Wow, gis na kama ya Carlo mum. And Michael Correa, which force did he belong to, as far as you know? Michael Correa, mum, chisa ham ham. Ban bunti karange bila ne kadiligi. Um, at the time I knew he, him to be in the military. 
And then what happened afterwards? And then the beating started. Right there and then. Right there and then. And uh, with the bag over your head, you, you can't breathe, you can't see. So I had to make a choice, what do I focus on? My breath or my sight? So I went for my breath. I placed my right lap over my mouth. Use it as a press to bite on the plastic bag. And I was able to make several holes in which I could breathe. Um, the, the, luckily, the beatings continued and the black plastic bag was torn off my face. Now I could see my attackers and I could breathe. It's just stay alive, that's all that matters now. I know, Mr. Jasse, this may be very difficult, but we would want to know, we people would want to know how, how the beating was done. Mr. Jasse, I know that this is not the case. But I know that you know, or you know, 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 you know. Once, I mean, after that session within the, um, the, the, the lobby, whatever you want, I think it's the first entrance as you go into the NIA, on the ground floor. That's where the beating started. And uh, right at the corner, I could, after the plastic bag was torn off, uh, I could see Ali Joe with also half torn plastic bag over his head. There was another group beating on him. So it was it was a very difficult moment. I mean, you just have to go through it. After that, I was removed and taken to the back of the building. An other plastic bag was placed on my head. I went through the same process of biting through it to make holes. This time they poured ice cold water over me. Extremely cold water. And they were using um, banana tree branches. I was handcuffed in my back. I was made to kneel with my head down. They were beating me in the back. Did you wear any shirt at the time? Yeah, I had a simple polo shirt. Was it at any point stripped of you? No, it was torn off. But yeah. I still had it on as completely torn, torn off. How many people participated in beating you in the first instance? Um, I think about five of them. I distinctly remember Malik Jata. Um, and uh, Michael Correa. Michael Correa. They, they were like the most agitated guys. I mean, they, <laughs> like they had to prove something. And for, in the first instance, for how long were you beaten? I couldn't tell because 
the duration is the last thing that's on your mind when you're under such a situation. But when it was all done, I had the first call for prayer. Let's do this. Let's do it. Thank you. I'm sorry that uh, you had to go through that. This should never happen to any one of us. There is no crime. That justifies one's torture. A civilized people. You should be able to investigate crimes. Without having to brutalize one another. That was not the last time you were tortured, was no. it? No. Did it? Yes. 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 They came back the next night, same time, 2 a.m. And we went through the same process. And uh, once they were done, again, I had the call for prayer. Yeah. No, we can do this. We can do this. Let's do it. Let's do it. Come on. Well, continue. Who was involved this time around? It's the same group. Michael Jatters. Michael Jatters. Michael no. Corey. Oh, sorry. Whatever Jatters. Uh, Jatter. I can't remember his Michael name. Korea. Initially, you mentioned a Malik Jata. Ma sorry, Malik Jata, Michael Korea, and one Alu Cisse. This is the same group of people that tortured everybody. With the president, in the presence of uh, Musa Jami and Kimbul Tamba. At one point, I saw Ala, uh, Martin, I think it's General Martin. On that particular night, he was there. Did he say anything to stop it? No, he did not. But when the beatings on my back with the banana branches got intensified, he came over and knelt behind me and uh, said, Mr. Jase, just tell them what they want to know. We have already made statements. We've already been on television. What in the world do you want to know now? What good would it do? I suspected Mr. Martin was behind me. It was his own way of trying to stop the beating because they, he was right behind me where, where they were beating me. And it was at that time that they wrapped it up and I was taken back to my altar. But that aside, why he do anything to stop the beating? Absolutely. Absolutely nothing. 
during this beating, were you still being asked questions? What we la don't do no no. Nda, you la don't like I like it. Yes, they were. Wow, no me don't like. What types of questions were they asking? Yen first one like tell you la don't like. These were times when they would throw throw names at you like was Asenjai Sidi involved? Was Sirif Diba involved? And these other individuals, as if they are trying to just widen the net. While this beating was ongoing, were members or officers of the NIA aware what was going on? They were at the window looking down on what was going on. Could you identify any one of them who was there watching? What was going on? Well, Mumadu Haidara was there. Mumadu Haidara, they knew for one. And he saw everything that was on God. I even believe he ordered them at some point. Uh, we have received a statement from Alaji Martin suggesting that the system that was in place uh, was that suspects would be brought in and be made to say what the NIA wanted them to say. If they don't, they would be taken out by the junglers, brutalized and brought back, and the cycle will continue until they get the kind of statement that they desired from this person. Is that true or is it false? <laughs> Uh, that is true. However, we must understand that this was an arrangement between all of the groups that were in the panel. Mr. Jassi, this is very important. Mr. Jassi, was the military involved in this arrangement? I believe so because all of the people that actually laid hands on me were members of the military. Were the military top bra who were part of the panel aware and involved in this arrangement? I believe so very strongly because at one point I had complained to the senior police officers that the torches were out of hand. It had to stop. And some of the police officers agreed. And Musa Jame and Timbul Tamba were there. Musa Jame and Timbul Tamba and all the soldiers whose name I do not know. And when the I believe it was ASP Lamin Sisi appealed to uh, Musa Jame to, for them to stop it. Musa Jame said we will have to talk to CDS Langtombong Tamba. How did you feel when you heard that? 
I was under the imp I, I had reasons to believe at the time that a, a CDS Tamba could either authorize or stop the tortures. He was in a position to do either one. Uh, what do you say to the suggestion that CD Estamba did not know what was going on? That would be false and misleading and in a way shameful because whilst in mile two when CDS Tamba joined us, he had come back from the NIA looking exactly like we looked when we visited that place. What do you say to the suggestion that that look was all a posture, it was false, aimed at misleading everybody that he was tortured when nothing had happened to him? That was so obvious, I wouldn't even entertain the thought that it was a joke. It was a play, no. He was tortured and everybody knew he was tortured. Did you see any obvious telltale signs? I did, I went to his cell, I saw him inside the cell because when they had just come in, they would not let you out. We have been there for a while, we will get a chance to step out of our cells. I had been up to his cell, I felt bad because I went back on my thoughts on what Nurcham told me, that he was not involved for what he was being accused of, and I felt sorry for him. Would you have any idea as to why he would say he was not tortured? No. When the person you saw at mile two prison looked everything like a person who was tortured. Do you have any reason to think why he would do that? No. Any um, guess, any reason? No. I don't know what to do. 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 Yes, um, during the course of being in mile two, wow. um, I had had chance to sit and talk with him and just about everybody else. And I noticed from our conversations that he was very protective of President Jami. And I wanted to know for what reason after the treatment that he had received from this man. So I remember very well asking him and I ask everyone else that had our wives been responsible for bringing us into mile two, which one of them would still be married to them? And we all said, oh, we will divorce them. Then I told to Lang Tomong Tamba, 
And say divorce President Jami. Stop protecting him. Because he is the reason why you are here. And over the over other causes of discussions. Uh, we got into political discussions in which one day he told me President Jame has a right to be president for 30 years President Jame am na cier bi pour nek president fan wéri at sax just like president Jawara comme ni ko president Jawara nekké won and i came to understand la dal di gom nak né the issue the idea of the presidency to him mom yi nga xamné modi xalaati nek president ci mom ni ko gisé was a family thing that belonged to them moy dal ni mbiri mbokala bo xamné ñom ñoko mom and they have to protect one another from outsiders. So I understood from that view he would never publicly criticize President Jami. Apart from uh, Lang Tombong being someone you said knew exactly what was going on as part of the panel. Did all other members of the panel know exactly the kind of arrangement they had as described by Alaji Martin? I have every reason to believe that every member of the panel knew. Would you say that, how would you describe the system? Would you say it included uh, questioners, statement takers, beaters, and photographers. Nga, di nga mwa wa hane li, nye pa chi boka, nye nga hamne nyo nye jel di binda kadu ni nye, nye nga hamne nyo don di lakte, nye nga hamne nyo don di jel di natal ni nye, ag nye 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 hamne, ag nye don di dore, nga nye 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 chim nangu tuwa bena nangu tuwa bila nye boka. Um, to give them any form of classification as to their various roles, would be giving them some kind of a benefit of some kind of an organization that they had. And there was no such thing. It was totally void of any form of organization. A beta would be the questioner, would be the one to give you your answers, would be the one to bring you a, a cold water when you need it. So, there was no organization. Would you say that this was an enterprise comprised of people from different institutions? all of whom were basically doing the same thing, all aimed at extracting a confession one way or another. Would you say that this was a Yes, I think the police were, were interested in evidence they could use in court. Whether that was obtained lawfully or unlawfully. And there's another group like the likes of uh, Musa Jame and Mumadu Haidara. They were more interested in what they can take to President Jami. And uh, the two were in the same. Two 
throughout this process, uh, did you have any reason to believe that President Jami was on top of what was going on at the, at the NIA premises? Nga, ci do halen bobu yeb li nga xamne amna NIA. Nga gom nga ne President Jami yegon nga wala mo nekkon ci kaw lepp lo xamne mu ngi doon di dox ci biir NIA bi fu. Amna lu tax du la firndel ni President Jami xamon na li xew ci NIA yeb waxtu wang fa neke. Yes, I have reasons to believe that because one of one on our way back to Malti on one of the torture sessions. Wow, I'm not from a Munasuka de Kuluara Tahmagum Lulu. Nate, I'm never in the best of Hamnenu, Rondam, Yamanga Hamnenu, get them to me, make it tell you. Because uh, during the time that I narrated in which uh, Mr. Martin came on my back. Bah jamono yu ham nene tali na kofi sangha jamono yu ma do miti tal be Mr Martin New just ma ganau. Musa jamé had his telephone over my mouth as I was being beaten. Musa jamé mungi amon telephone am bete kochi just ma gemengi jamono bina ham nene ma do do. I didn't know why at the time I thought it was really out of place. How ma wan na jamono bobo lana tanyo kodon defde. But on our way back to Malta, it was Musa jamé who drove me back with an, with an, uh, with, a, uh, with another soldier. Why jamu na binyo dello maeltu msa jamu mmoja nda waldi nyuo bumi anda abenin soldier. And he told me. Jamu wahmane. Um, he had to put the telephone over my mouth. Fajal telephone bete kuchuma ge mengi. Confirm to President Jamu. Unweral President Jamu ne. That I was actually being tortured. Ne, unweral President Jamu ne tega tega nyuma don miti tal. Because. The president had complained to them. The president be tawat na chenyom ne. They were afraid to touch me because I have U.S. citizenship. Then maraga la la na temanda ma amkei to do amire we America. So he had to do that to prove to him that they had actually tortured me. Ege na mota mugel telephone be tekot suma game ngi po president de ame dega miti tal binga ham ne mumle ni madonde. In all these torture sessions, was there at the point in time where a pistol was taken out on you? Si meti talio yep linga don di defnun, nda nyona be ega palas mo hamu gene na infetel linga hamu mo pistol pro gene ko linga hamu pro tital. Yes, I distinctly remember Malik Jata. Wow, fachele kuna buba Malik Jata. He removed a pistol which I immediately recognized as a nine millimeter. Uh, because the 9mm was our service weapons in the U.S. Navy. Navy. I was very, very familiar with it that I could recognize it on sight. In fact, I could recognize the sound of it. I don't have to see it. He had used this weapon and placed it in my mouth. And at that moment, they weren't asking me any questions. So I felt they were just having fun. Did he say anything when he to you when he put it in your mouth? He said something along the lines of, "Oh, you are American Rambo. We're going to deal with you." And uh, he was heavily he had a very strong uh, smell of alcohol and marijuana on him. At that time, that was when one of them stepped forward and pulled him back. Was he the only person in that state? No, because I could smell the same thing on a few other people. They were all high on drugs and alcohol. That's the impression I had. Uh, 
And during all this period, there were another set of people who were also investigated apart from your set. Do you know anything about these people? Did you encounter them? Yes, I I encountered them in mile two. Wow, say mile two. And uh, at the moment I didn't know who they were when I saw them, when people are being moved around in the cells. I'm sorry, instead of Aliuba, I meant to say Alfaba. 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 And Ibulo. Uh, Ibulo. I remember distinctly on the, the second night of my torture. Uh, when the Musa Jami was in the vehicle, we were about to go. Musa Jami, we were about to go. Musa Jami, we were about to go. He got off when uh, Tumutamba walked over and he got off the vehicle. When Tumutamba walked over and he got off the vehicle. And then told the other guy that was in the vehicle. When you get to mile two. When you get to mile two. Mile two. Uh, I want you to pick up. Then he named the Bamarena, Ali, uh, Ibulo, Alfaba, and all these other guys. And carry out the operation. The guy, the other soldier that was there, said, "Sir, I, can, I cannot do that. I'm not going to do that." And Musa Jame got angry. Musa Jame nunula mere. And these are his words. It's a fucking military order, you have to do it. And the guy got back into the vehicle. And murmuring under his breath. I didn't know what he was saying to himself. So Musa Jame got back into the vehicle. And I was driven to mile two. Um, that night. Those people that, whose name I heard were removed from the cells. And I think what happened to them was narrated right here in this room. You were executed. That's my understanding from the testimony in the, in the just to take you a little backwards, we were talking about knowledge of the senior officers at the NIA. Uh, you told us that Harisambu was present in the panel at some point. Uh, yes, he was there the very first day, uh, first night I appeared. Did he know what was going on, the tortures? And the threats to extract confessions? I was, uh, he was, uh, he was never present when I was being tortured. But I have no reasons to believe he didn't know. Why not go the tortures were too common. Too painful, too often that anyone working in that building wouldn't be no, wouldn't know about them. How do you know how or why these tortures stopped? Um, my, my perspective of it, 
was that after the second torture that I received, I came to realize that there's many, many other people have gone through even worse than I did. It became a major concern for all of us that you could barely sleep because you believe they're going to come for you. So, there was a guy who was executed uh, called Ali Uba, who was a steward, the prison steward. I spoke with him about getting information to the U.S. ambassador. So he secured a telephone. And uh, I gave him the number, number and he was able to reach the U.S. ambassador who was at the time Joseph Stafford. And inform him what was going on. After like about three days, I learned from the late Baba Job that he, he had received information that Ambassador Stafford had confronted President Jame. He has information that we are being tortured. And if that is the case, they better stop right now. And that was the last time we were ever picked up. You were subsequently charged for your involvement in this uh, failed coup d'etat. Tell us about it. Yes, they came to the Mile 2 prisons. Wow, Mile 2. And uh, we were formally charged there at mile two. And um, that was when we, some of us engaged lawyers in legal, legal help to start dealing with the situation. So you were subsequently prosecuted and convicted? Yes, but prior to that, I think there is something that the nation needs to know. Please go ahead. Nurcha never left the Gambia. Until the day he was captured and killed, he never left the Gambia. How did you know that? I was talking to Ndur Chambu twice or three times a week. From an AfriCell phone number. In his location outside Farafeni. He would even send me money. Inside the prison. Come again? While you are inside the prison. Yeah, whilst I was inside the prison. I am saying this. The state of our security needs to be reformed. Well, the security sector reform, I would imagine that you, you would have been approached to make some contribution uh, to, the, to, the, to that endeavor. But if, if you have any ideas of any reform of any of the institutions, 
uh, that need to be made in order to ensure Gambia's greater observance of human rights. By all means, send that to us, uh, the Commission, by way of memorandum. We would be more than happy to look into it and to consider including the issues as appropriate uh, in the recommendations by the Commission. But in the meantime, let, uh, let us proceed uh, and, 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 and deal with the other issues. You would also have an opportunity, I believe, Mr. Chair, to make closing remarks if you deem any of those issues appropriate for inclusion in your, in your closing remarks, by all means, do so. Okay. As far as you know, for how many years was Ndur Cham circulating in this country before his arrest? My understanding was that he returned two weeks after my arrest. And uh, that was because his conscience wouldn't let him take the opportunity for asylum in Germany whilst we were in mile two. So we would have had so he, had, he told me on several occasions over the telephone that he wants to organize a prison break. I talked him out of it because I felt he was speaking more out of guilt. And a lot of people would have died had there, any been, had there been any form of an armed attack of the prison. And that was not necessary. And I take it that you've been in regular contact with him for six years? Yes, I continued, even after mile two, I continued to have um, contact with him because when I was released, I wasn't allowed to stay in the country. I was sent into exile back to the United States. They would say repatriated to the United States. Well, the uh, for its uh, dual citizenship, things could be a little bit complicated. So. <laughs> yes. Uh, good. All right. And. Uh, you were charged with concealment of treason, aiding and abetting Durcham's escape, and so on. Yes. How did you and your group go about preparing for your defense while at Mile 2 prison? You Basically, we're all just depending on our legal help. And to cooperate with them to see how we can help in our own defense. You have mentioned quite a number of soldiers here. How were you able to identify them? How did you know who was who? 
Um, what I did was I compared notes with a guy like Ali Job. Ali Job used to be the some kind of an accountant within the military. Ali Job, the civilian. And he knew Ali Job, the family accountant, she is a soldier. And uh, he was familiar with all of them. He would put names to faces. Because I wanted to have those names at trial as the evidence of torture. There are two names you would never forget. Amongst those soldiers. Job, I mean, uh, Michael Correa well, and Malik Michael Jata. For the terrible things they did. Yes. And also, you are not a person I will not forget is Momodu Haidara. Because he actually was the contractor. He was the one who was responsible for encouraging Musa Jame and his guys to treat people badly. During the preparation of your defense, were you allowed the opportunity to speak freely with your lawyers? No, that wasn't the case. Um, each time we have a visit from the lawyer, um, lawyers have complained that they have to go through a very difficult process to even access us. And uh, prison officers as well as armed soldiers would accompany us to these lawyers. So really there was no privacy, there was no open forum in which you could discuss with your lawyer. In the end, you are convicted. What was the sentence? 20 years with hard labor. But you did not get to serve that term. All of it. What happened? No, I served for six and a half years. Sometime, I think it was 17th of September 2012. I heard over the radio, over News at 10 that the Reverend Jesse Jackson was in town and had spoken to President Jeremy and had secured the release of two prisoners from mile two. And I just prayed to God I was one of them. And it was. Um, then we were called up out of our cell at about 5 p.m. and uh, taken to the office, the headquarters, the prison headquarters. And we were informed of our release in the presence of the then Minister of Justice 
Mr. Sam, Mr. I can't remember his name, Pahari. Jame. Pahari Jame, yes, that's him. He was Solicitor General. He was Solicitor General, okay. Solicitor General Pahari Jame. He was the one who came for us in the prisons. <laughs> and after our release. I thought I was going home, but we were told we were going to the airport. I was a little bit confused because I didn't know whether my family knew about what was going on. And uh, when I got to the airport, airport, I found the entire U.S. Embassy there. And the counselor called me to sign my children's passport. To, to validate it because they're underage. That's when I knew they have made arrangements for my entire family to join me. <laughs> Who was the second person released together with you? Dr. Scott. Okay. Okay. Dr. Scott Redjani, who was supposed to serve life for a t-shirt. He said Interesting. We were taken from there directly to, to the airport and, I, and we had airport. to dress in uh, the clothes we had six years earlier. That was so out of style. <laughs> I mean, not, not that you cared. <laughs> not that I cared. And for the first time, after six and a half years, I had a cold drink. From to New York City. Then I realized you don't ever take anything for granted. Nothing. Who would care about a cold drink? But when you have it for the first time after six and a half years, you realize God can give it to you and take it anytime he wants. And I was in a cell that was one and a half meters by two and a half, by two meters. Within the twinkle of an eye, I woke up in the downtown Sheraton, New York City. Only Allah can do that. It's a world of a difference. Can you tell us the impact of your arrest and detention on your family? Um, whilst you were inside mile two, you think you suffer in the inside, but your family suffered more in the outside. You know you were okay, but they don't know you were okay. I had two boys, and a wife, and she had to take care of them. Or in an environment in which anyone who has a problem with President Jame is an outcast. You have to deal with that on a daily basis. I think that was far more difficult than what we endured in mile two. It's amazing the strength that is in the Gambian woman. Don't ever underrate them. They are strong. Each and every one of them. Because what I had in my house, I realized my colleagues have in their house. Strong woman.
We could not have survived without them. Indeed, the system could not have fallen without them. No further questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council, and thank you, Mr. Jaze, for your testimony. One short question on my part. Multiple tortures, six and a half years of incarceration. What went wrong? Um, the system broke down. When a nation reaches a point in which no one is held accountable, naturally the people would do anything to survive. I believe that many of the people who participated in these tortures or who looked the other way whilst they happened, are decent human beings who could have done otherwise have they the right leadership. Um, in the U.S. Marines, the way we are trained is to believe there is a killer instinct in everybody. That killer instinct is what it's developed. So you can kill. Believe it or not, everyone in this room is capable of killing. If you find yourself in a position in which you must, so this is a bopachi, anam yo hamne fuck na rei. Chances are you will. This is why we must have correct leadership at all times. In every aspect of our governance and our lives. If that fails, chaos will, will, will reign in. You wouldn't say that uh, the killer instinct was in Sergeant Carter and Goma Pyle. Sergeant Carter and Goma Pyle. Sergeant if Carter you should and Goma know Pyle. them yeah. from uh, U.S. Marine Corps, Goma Pyle. Yes, the killer instinct. And he was sent out. And that time, I think, I had to go out and they were practicing. And he was supposed to kill. Goma didn't. And Sergeant Carter, the drill sergeant, came out of him. And he just went on and on and on. The killer instinct is not only to kill a fellow human being. It's even killing a mosquito, taking a life. That's where the instinct lies. Not to kill, not only to kill a fellow human being. But it could be developed to that level. If you have the right training. And besides the incompetence that you alluded to vis-a-vis -vis the um, uh, intelligence or secret service or whatever here in the Gambia, how was um, uh, Noor Cham able to stay in the country the time that you say he was in the country and nobody knew? <laughs> My view of that is that, number one, most people, no one expects him to be here. They've, the last they heard was he's gone to Senegal. So no one will be looking. The people who may know, are more than likely sympathizers who would not betray him. Coupled with the fact that we do not have a true security network for internal security in the Gambia. So, he has 
stayed as long as he did. I came to know about his arrest. I got a telephone call from the then British High Commissioner. His name was David Montley. I've never met him. He called and said that we understand Mr. Colin Durcham has been arrested. If I could confirm that. I had spoken to Mr. Cham a couple of days before that and actually sent him a hundred dollars for uh, Idel Fitr. Um, I was shocked when he told me that, so I asked him to give me a couple of days to find out. I kept calling the number that um, I had used many years to communicate with him. But this time there was no answer. And Mr. Montley was concerned that if the international community and the Gambians are not aware of Mr. Cham's arrest, he may be liquidated without the knowledge of the people. And that's exactly what happened. He wanted to let everybody know that Mr. Cham is in custody. Prevent any foul play. Thank you very much, Mr. Commissioners. If you have any questions, Deputy Chair, you have the floor, please. Mike. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Witness. Once again, we have to sympathize for the great suffering that you went through. But I would also want to thank you for acknowledging the resilience of the Gambian woman. Why, Tommy? My question is uh, on the testimonies. After eliciting these testimonies from you, what was the point in the continued tortures? I had asked this question to myself a few times and the rest of my colleagues did. But this torture continued just to satisfy an urge to inflict pain. The exact um, characteristic of a sadist. Because I remember whilst I served in Operation Desert Storm, we had captured some Iraqi soldiers. They were hungry. Then he Our commander took our own food and gave it to them. They were already captured. They can no longer harm us. So why make them suffer? And uh, the shame on our military, they will eat their very own. I will not raise a hand. 
against a person who wears the same uniform as me. Here is the order of the day. It's a shame. What I could say, dog, they eat dog. That's what they do. Thank you very much. Thank you, yeah, Imam Jalo. You have the floor, please. Imam Jalo, Ganela Lodge. Witness, I'll remind you of some incidents. Ganela, fatally, I have held. When you invited me to your office when you are serving as Director General of Immigration. At that time, we are all in the same mosque at Pipeline, worshipping Allah. You invited me to your office. I identified some people you thought were responsible for going down Usman Silla. You wanted to prevail on me if I can get the family of Silla to come and see these people and maybe relate whether they have ever seen these people with Silla. You invited me to your office. You invited me to your office. I actually did make the effort because Usman, I know very, very well. When you realize that, the way we are looking for possible culprits was not the actual direction. The very soldiers of Yajame sat here and said that they did it. What did you feel at that point in time when you realized this? Yes. The Quite frankly, the issue of President Jami is something that I hope no nation would ever experience again. Um, he had exercised absolute power over us and had used the instruments of power and uh, had used it against the Gambian people instead of for the Gambian people. And that soldiers who were supposed to protect and defend the Constitution would actually be the very ones to violate our rights. It is nothing but a shame. And uh, I remember the, the, the meeting I had with you in my office. Uh, at least, I am sure you are one person who will say, I try to be on the right side of history. The other question is, you are a very well-abled soldier. Soldier, full of experience. Yeah. How did it happen that you could accept to be a party to overthrow a government to be led by a very small young man in this country? What really induced you to get involved with this? May I ask, are you referring, you are referring to new chance? Okay. The 
the state has a responsibility to protect its citizens. When the state fails and starts to take the lives of its own citizens unlawfully, people are forced to look for ways in which to survive. Especially if those atrocities are being committed by somebody who came to power through a coup, that nation had actually entertained a coup d'etat. And you cannot reward one group of coup coupists with the state house and reward the other with the jail house. It is wrong for Jame to overthrow the government of the Gambia. No one stopped him for 22 years. So eventually, after too many people have died, it is just natural that some people may want to stand up to put an end to it. Because an army from wasn't going to come from anywhere else to save us. And Cham and his group are not a group of people who wanted to overthrow a government just because they are lawless. He didn't want to die, period. And so many people have died. No one did anything. So it's a God-given right for someone to stand up to do something. If I was in Nurchan's place, I would try to stop Jami. And I think that's exactly what Allah Almighty would want me to do. Because if you see wrong, he says use your hands to stop it. If you cannot do that, criticize it. If you cannot do that, be quiet. Nurcham got up, all with his, the people that he was with. They did what God wanted them to do. The issue of success and failure is in the hands of Allah. Our obligation is just to try. I respect what they did. I will honor all of them. And Gambia should honor them. If we need a few good men, those are the men. They should be our heroes. They stood up when no one else would. They are heroes. They wanted to stay alive. They wanted all to stay alive. If that means breaking a law to do so, let's break it and fix it later. That was why I joined. Imam C, you have the floor, please. Imam C, Tamit Bwana Lalaj. Imam C, Tamit Bwana Lalaj. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Imam C. Greetings to you. Dela Gere Vitam. And my thanks to you, too. Nigo Bugye Sarew. The way you love your country. Yavi Judo America Mununga for Amligye Budoi. You are, st you are staying in America. You could have a very good job there. But your everything is here in the Gambia. You came here. You wanted to do a very good job here. But you cannot. And you suffered from betrayals. We thank you for that. My second uh, question is, how did your lawyer end up? Uh, Mariam Dentin. Mariam Dentin. Mariam Dentin. Mariam Dentin. Mariam Dentin. 
Nous sommes pour nous tuer. Nous sommes venus And Mr. Jassy, I'd like to join my colleagues, especially the deputy chair, to say sorry for what happened to you. Mangibuga and Aksuma and Andori, Ninga Hamne, Mangeli, Yabinom, Puni, Wahlane, Ninga Jigal. I have a couple of questions I want to ask you. Bugana la la nyari la te? Nyar, a couple. Couple, nyar, two. I think a couple is two. Several, several. But the first is regarding how um, Reverend Jesse Jackson got involved in, in your release, because we've had different um, 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 stories about how he got involved. Do you know how he got involved in your release? The Reverend Jesse Jackson. Nakala duge ki mirio hamne yula dohal be pruno baila. Tamaya. First of all, we all know Reverend Jesse Jackson does this kind of work worldwide. And uh, he's um, director of, of international affairs for his organization. He's a Gambian born. It's called James Gomez. James Gomez. Who also happens to be my cousin. So when uh, Jame started executing, um, they thought it's time to move in and try to stop. Um, they were entertained by the U.S. Embassy here. U.S. Embassy Because I think they felt uh, uh, just Reverend Jesse Jackson would be more effective dealing with Jame at a personal level. Um, I just this was my understanding and I Reverend Jesse Jackson told me Lila Gumte Reverend Jesse Jackson Wahna Mani. In fact he teased me, he said to me, What wrong did he do to Jame? Because as soon as he started negotiations with Jame for our release. Um, we must know that J Reverend Jesse Jackson did not only request the release of myself and uh, Dr. Jani. He wanted the whole group to be released. And then he realized that negotiation was getting very tough. So he dropped it off to the two of us. And uh, Jame had promised him that he would release the rest later. And the agreement he reached with Jame was that if Dr. Jane could go, he would let Dr. Jane go. But for some reason, I was too dangerous, he said. Why? Poor man, dal man, oru ma wondal. The um, Reverend Jesse Jackson said it took him five hours to convince him. Reverend Jesse the Jackson same sitting. He said President Jame finally agreed on one condition. President Jame, we would leave this the cell. Directly to the airport. Them directly airport ba. And directly out of Africa. We are not even to transit in any African country. So we were. That's why we went directly to Brussels. Um, this was how I understood they got involved because of the killings and. Um, Reverend Jackson wanted to help secure everybody's release. And that was the reason he asked both Dr. Jane and I not to be vocal in criticizing President Jame. Because it would jeopardize 
the chances of release of the others that we left there. By the others, do you mean the 2006 group or it was a mixed group? We have in 2006 I, he was focusing on anyone that was on there for political reasons. Political reasons. is from your testimony. Wow. I saw a very interesting comparison. This <laughs> between how the Gambia government treated you on the one hand and how the American government inter intervened and, and how in essence they were interested in your in your welfare. Would your fate have been different if you were not an American citizen? Um, when it comes to stuff like that, I give it to Allah. It doesn't matter what your nationality, your, your citizenship is. If he wants to protect you, he's going to do it. The issue of being American, and uh, that's just an earthly thing. Well, that's just the pawn in the game. Yeah, but um, he would have what we can learn from that lesson is that governments are supposed to protect its citizens. And any decent human being who leads a nation should be ashamed of an other state telling you how best to treat your people. Final question. Um, you spoke to Nur Sham for, for quite a while when you were in jail and he was, as you said, around in the country. One thing that we've been um, told in this commission is that when, when people are arrested, their family members are also sometimes victimized in different ways. Did you, by any chance, speak to Ndurcham, or did he tell you whether his family was victimized in any way or not? Thank you. Um, he, we never got into the conversation about the victimization of his own family. But he was very interested in my family. Um, that he had showed me over our conversations. That on a couple of occasions he had even sent money to my family. Um, that's, he never discussed that with me about his family. Once again, thank you. Uh, Jerry Jeff. Mm -hmm. James, James Gomez, a splendid, splendid Gambian, right-hand man of uh, my Jesse Jackson. He came with Jesse Jackson to meet with Kofi Annan when we were working in Geneva on the Syria dossier. And uh, um, Reverend Jackson joked him and said, when Annan said to him, that's Lamin from, from the Gambia, and he said, ah, you also have your James Gomez uh, with you here. <laughs> that, uh, with, but if you have any concluding remarks to make, please proceed to make them now. All right. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner and the uh, lead council and the media and everybody else that's listening. This 
is an issue that we must take very seriously in changing our country. My area of expertise Man, is in the area of security. I have been trained to scan and look at matters and issues that may pose a security, security problem. And all, most of all of the things that were present during Jame era, in my view, has not been adequately addressed and reformed to avoid it again. When you, when you want to look at how law-abiding and how organized a nation is, the first place you want to look at is how well they obey their traffic laws. If they violate the traffic laws left, right, and center, is there an indication other laws are being violated? It creates chaos, and that's where lawlessness begins to form. When we are unable to at least accommodate each other to cross the street, I don't see how we can accommodate each other in other things. We, the most important thing we need to do is security sector reforms. In almost every nation, the first point of contact with any government is usually the police. If that door is not correct, you have a perception of the government. It is therefore important that we take the documents that were written in order to reform the security sectors and put it into action. So that we as individuals will begin to feel secure in our homes and in our environment. I can assure you, everyone in this room has a high level of concern that they may be a theft Sacha or breaking Walla Dani Circle victim. That is because the rate at which that is happening in the country is so high that we are beginning to get concerned that we might become victims. It indicates the fear of crime that a society may have. And when you talk about the security of a nation, it's going to begin with the security of the self. If you do not feel secure as an individual, then there is need to deal with the larger picture. I had an opportunity to work with some members of the security forces dealing with SSR. A lot of good documents have been written. We need to put it into action. Because the average Gambian isn't going to read those documents. They just want to feel secure in the streets yeah. and in their homes. Yeah. 
Once we feel secured, laws are enforced, we may begin to prosper economically. We will feel politically empowered. We will all begin to take responsibility in the manner in which we govern. We will hold our elected officials accountable. We can create a better Gambia for everybody. And those going through the back way may eventually stop. We have a lot of work to do. But I don't think we have any problems that other nations haven't experienced. The solutions are available. We just need to learn them and apply them. Long live the Gambia. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Jesse, for your testimony. concluding remarks. Uh, it brings us to the end of our proceedings for today. And uh, uh, we will reconvene tomorrow morning at uh, 10 o'clock. Um, the deputies um, kindly agreed them to chair the meeting. I'm running an urgent errand, so she would be in, your, in very good hands tomorrow. Thank you all very much indeed. Meeting is adjourned. designer outlet is the number one quality and affordable stop shop for all your needs get your evening dresses suit and ties office wears for both ladies and gentlemen beach wears sport wears pure leather shoes for men quality belts bags heels for all beautiful ladies original perfumes accessories and a lot more
Find us at Kololi New Road, opposite Gaddafi Mosque at the Aqua Preacher Station. Or call us on 295-3411 or 764-2486. Miss B Designer Outlet. Shop right, look good. When we touch down, but I rock down. Gangtel G Fiber, now you can enjoy super fast internet in gigabytes. G Fiber is affordable, stable, secured, and accessible to homes, businesses, and enterprises. With Gamtel G Fiber, the future is speed. Gamtel, creating a brighter future in communication.